Good evening and welcome to the Vienna Duke. Welcome for those of you who can uh, And this being a country of the Latin community, and it's been confirmed again last night when His Excellency uh, Mr. Jack Long from the University of Culture uh, and was given the highest cultural honor. Uh, was, was giving the minister the highest cultural honor that France can bestow. It was again an indication, a confirmation of Qatar's place in the Francophone world, which is extraordinary when you come to think about it. Um, I'm absolutely delighted to have the opportunity to introduce to you um, two people. In fact, first of all, a very good friend of Georgetown, the ambassador of Qatar. Uh, France, who will in fact be with us for a conference where for President Kaifan, a discussion. But um, Sir Jacques Lang, who in many ways doesn't need a, an introduction, because he is a long standing icon of French politics and culture. And as those, some of you may not know, and perhaps Mr. Long may not know, one of the claims to fame of Georgetown University the School of Public Service is we are the only university that I know of that have a degree and major in culture and politics. And I think Minister Long is the, the epitome of this combination. I will introduce him, even though he doesn't need an introduction, um, he is uh, someone with very lengthy political experience, very high in the French Socialist Party. He, is, he was a deputy in, in the French Parliament. He was also in the European uh, Parliamentarian. Um, but of course, one of the things that strike me in his, in his uh, CV as well is he was twice high up in a successful French presidential campaign, twice with uh, President Mitterrand. He has also been a, a long-standing professor of international and public law at various French universities. He's written any number of books, some more political, some quite, uh, quite academic, on international boundaries, on, for instance, another very interesting title, The State and the Theatre, and so on. So you see I have a very rounded person, somebody who fits amongst the academic world as easily as he does in politics, as easily as he does in the world of culture. You may know um, that one of France's premier institutions, as far as cultural institutions, as far as this part of the world is concerned, the Institut du Mont Dara. If you haven't been there, go. It's a fabulous building, and it's also very interesting in terms of content. content. He is the president of the Institut du Mont Dara, the Institute of the Arab World. This is really an iconic institution of its kind in, in Europe. Um, he's also been, uh, it's, he's shaped in, say, in a sense, part of French musical culture, the musical culture, um, created and shaped a number of festivals of music. So, you know, I, I think I'd probably stop there, but it gives you some kind of picture of how rounded a figure um, and uh, um, Monsieur Lang is and why he's been he's so well known to most people around the world. The intention is to have a very relaxed conversation um, on the subject of culture, politics, and policy. Very much close to the hearts of many, many of us here and of some of our students, of course, and faculty. Um, Mr. Long will give a short um, a few remarks, and we'll then have a conversation. I will probably have a few thoughts, a few responses, and we'll, we'll throw things open. It's, I think you would very much prefer it to be an open conversation rather than a lecture. Okay, so, <coughs> if you prefer to use chat. I have to speak uh, en français. I'm French. Bon, excusez-moi, peut-être tout à l'heure. Apologies. Maybe later. 
after defeating my shyness, maybe I would be able to speak a few words in my very basic English. So we don't need a very uh, long introduction. What I think is important here would be to answer your questions, uh, your observations. I'm not here with a um, speech, a speech that would be long and exhausting as a uh, Mr. Dean mentioned a few points and a few phases of my um, path. I won't add much to that. I'm passionate when it comes to art, to politics, to democratic life, to university as well, because I've been a professor of law for a long period of time. Education is a sort of passion to me. I'm passionate when it comes to life in general. So of course, I won't be able to answer all of your questions, but a lot of things matter to me. I find them interesting, and uh, indeed, I can say that I'm here as the head, the president of an institution that is unique uh, in the world. It is called l'Institut du Monde d'Arabe, uh, the Institute of the Arab World. It was created uh, a while ago. Uh, the French president and the Arab countries asked me to give uh, this institution a new momentum. And uh, obviously, we have a number of concrete projects, uh, whether on the level of education, culture, art, uh, projects that uh, really aim at expressing uh, the uh, change, the transformation that uh, are happening, that are occurring in the Arab uh, countries uh, yourselves. You are here, you are uh, researchers, students, uh, or faculty, and a country that uh, itself is witnessing uh, an evolution and a development, a great development. You are here, uh, probably at this university and uh, research lab, so I don't know whether you are really able to perceive, to identify directly uh, us, obviously, we can see the changes that are happening here. I came for the first time to Qatar, uh, I think it was 12 years ago. And uh, if I were to compare um, what we see today, I don't know that well of Qatar anyway, but I mean, if I were to compare that to what I've seen 12 years ago, I think that uh, Doha back then was just as a village, a village, an okay size village. Yeah, there was just one hotel, one big hotel. Oh, it was nice, it was pleasant. We used to take walks by the sea. And all these projects, uh, cultural projects, wasn't even there. This uh, museum that is not very far from here, museum, I don't know if you even visit um, the venue. Just last night, I visited the museum and uh, they were actually preparing for an exhibition of an artist that you probably have heard of in contemporary art. Her name is Mona Atun. She is, I think, of Palestinian origins but she lives between the UK, the US, and France. So really, if you have the possibility, I call upon you to visit. I, I mean, I'm not here to um, promote the museum, but I'm just trying to shed light on this very interesting change. The museum also has um, the collection, probably five to 6,000 items that were bought in terms of contemporary art. And what I have seen yesterday represents really the diversity, the incredible diversity and the creativity of the contemporary Arab world. Not, not only the Arab world, but uh, you have um, objects and items coming from other countries. In general, it is very, very uh, interesting to all of us and uh, very soon the National Museum of Qatar is uh, gonna uh, come to light under uh, the uh, design of Jean Nouvel who was actually behind the design of l'Institut du Monde Arabe in 
in Paris. He is also a star of uh, architecture. I remember when he was not really that known uh, he was 30, we wanted his services, and now I can say that uh, he is sought after. He is building here, he is building in Abu Dhabi as well, the Maison du Louvre, or the uh, Louvre Abu Dhabi Museum, it is gonna be something. And these are only a few examples. Now, what uh, has been done here by uh, the former emir? and his aid on the level of education, health, culture, it is really outstanding. And uh, you come to ar architecture and to many other aspects of it. So I'm here to uh, build this bridge between our institute and uh, Qatar. And uh, just uh, yesterday, I had the privilege to actually visit, and I see one of the directors right here, uh, the uh, National uh, Library of Qatar. And uh, I believe you ha people have access to the library, right? They, it is possible to go and visit the library. Uh, not yet, oh, not all the time. There are collections that are simply extraordinary, manuscripts, cards, books, and uh, this National Library in order to really host all these uh, outstanding items. It's actually building a new venue that was also designed by an arch architect that uh, I'm, I'm a fan of. His name is Hem Kulas. I don't know if I'm pronouncing uh, appropriately the name. He is actually um, an architecture from Holland. He is fantastic. And this project is going to take place here, a few steps away from this very place. So you will be able to see coming to light, incepting this very beautiful library that would uh, represent and that would have and would host very, very beautiful and um, amazing objects of art. Now, I, when it comes to the money here, the sources, I really would want to see such money used for cultural and educational purposes or intellectual purposes and not really wasted in uh, structures of speculation, really, like with other countries that I'm not saying that everything's perfect in Qatar. I'm not uh, the spokesperson of Qatar, but I'm just trying to say that here, just like in many other countries in the Arab world, uh, we are viewing, we're seeing huge change, not only Qatar really. Look at, look at Abu Dhabi. Obviously, they're constructing this uh, Louvre Museum and other fantastic museums. And they have a city that is uh, of the future, I dare say. I think it's called uh, Masdar, Masdar City in Abu Dhabi. I, uh, visited the place a few months ago, and it was really impressive. They say that they want to produce their own energy, and then really prepare a future where oil and gas would be less used, or anyway, would not really exist. And this uh, city of the future has um, environmental, ecological, uh, objective, but even if you were to look at the architectural side of it, uh, again, architects from the Arab world and then from the West, uh, especially an architect uh, that you probably know, Foster. Uh, so it's going to be, it is, actually it is already a lab, a research field, a university, and also with housing units. So these are aspects that are really new Origin. I'm not saying, of course, that the Arab world is just perfection. Unfortunately, you all know that, unfortunately, sadly said, there are regions uh, that are in the dark, really. I'm speaking namely about Syria. And it is deep, deep suffering 
when we think that such a beautiful country and uh, this educated uh, pe people of Syria is really under attacks. So we're talking about 120,000 dead people, not to mention the suffering, an international community that is uh, simply not doing anything. And uh, now the Arab world is trying with a lot of modesty to play a role, a certain role. For example, having organized um, two days on, on Syria that happened at our institute in France. And we are preparing, actually, for two ma major functions, one on the refugees. And uh, that would be through the help of the uh, UNHCR. And uh, as you know, uh, these refugees, uh, we're talking about uh, hundreds of thousands and they live in very, very harsh conditions. And for the hosting countries that we should praise here and pay tribute to, well, they pose great challenge. Take the example of Jordan, Turkey, Lebanon, and a few others. So we really wanted to um, try to speak to the international community so that it does more, so that it gets more active. Obviously, we cannot stop the conflict, but maybe, maybe it would be possible on the humanitarian level to really bring to these refugees uh, a bit of assistance or help or solidarity. Another um, topic that we are going to be um, organizing a conference about uh, is it's actually the historical heritage of, of, of Syria. You probably know that this is a heritage that is just very rich and outstanding, especially when it comes to the Roman heritage there, not only Roman. There are structures. You have, you know, half of Aleppo has been uh, destroyed, and then Palmyra, and many other sites. And also, there were looting incidents where, unfortunately, some tried to gain um, money and wealth uh, using the misery of others. Uh, we know that a lot of items were um, had disappeared in Syria. So uh, these are a few. Um, examples. We can really tour the Arab world, but let me, before I finish this introduction, uh, take my hat off. This is what you say in English? Yes, I want to say chapeau, take my hat off. To a country that is not really big in terms of, of uh, geography. It is, it is big because of the courage and the history. I'm talking about Tunisia in particular. The Arab Spring was born in Tunisia. And uh, from the Tunisians themselves, from the different uh, Tunisian parties as well, there was a need of uh, really understanding the best interest of the country, a lot of courage in order to get to such a compromise. You know that a few days ago, they have ratified and adopted a constitution, a constitution that is very, very democratic, I would say. And um, this is um, the expert of law in me speaking. This, uh, I'm really amazed to see such a constitution in this country. And in a few um, weeks or months, elections, free um, elections will be held. They'll probably be under the supervision also of certain international bodies in order to uh, el um, elect a um, president and an assembly. I hope that Tunisia would be finally uh, finding this peace, this stability, and also the democracy and uh, uh, the freedom of media. There is also Morocco. Morocco that is uh, positively progressing, I would say, on the political le level. Something that I uh, really uh, acknowledge and like in the Moroccan constitution, it is the preamble, actually. And the preamble of this, of this constitution, I mean the beginning of the text, really, it is uh, said that uh, the ambition of the country, of the state, really, is, uh, the way it was written, it is uh, just amazing. In any country, and especially in an Arab country, it is said in this uh, Moroccan constitution and the preamble that uh, Morocco acknowledges the diversity or the 
plurality really of uh, its uh, intellectual and spiritual heritage. So you have the African part, you have the Arab part, you have the Muslim part, obviously. And also uh, the heritage of the Berber. And this this is not something we can take for granted in any country. And uh, also, the Hebraic heritage. And this preamble, in my opinion, is just an anthem of diversity, and it is uh, addressed to all of us. I thought I was going to be brief, but look at me going on and on, Mr. Dean. I'm willing to speak of all the topics that are in, of interest to you, culture, politics, democracy, law, but you're probably a professor in biology. I can't speak of biology, really.